my first one, and my first sign of decline uh, is low baptism numbers. And I think that, that does link into, you know, when you're thinking about finance and it's showing that there's no new people coming in, baptisms does the same. People that are coming in and getting baptized uh, and saying, I wanna make a commitment for, for Christ and that's an ongoing thing. I think that shows that people are, you know, they're, the new people are coming in, they're getting saved, they're getting baptized and then they're starting that walk with Jesus. When your baptism numbers are going lower, I think that's a, that's a real sign that your church could be starting into decline. Now, but what's the average for that? And the average is normally about, uh, if you take your congregation size, a healthy amount is about six to 7% of that congregation. So if you've got that's a church- That's high. <laughs> that seems high. It does seem high, doesn't it? But if you've got a hundred people in your church, about you should be baptizing about six to seven people a year so it's just to break because, that's like a break even th- yeah so that's a break even so you yeah. we're, so we're looking at kind of like you know like somewhere around five percent of people is just like natural movement of people yeah wow that's frightening yeah so i baptism numbers are I think it's it's a, it's one of those statistics that I think every church should track and should track really really closely, because if you aren't baptizing people and over COVID times it's been really hard to baptize people, we're not sure how to do it, you're not sure how to do it safely. I'm pretty sure water and diseases don't go together very well. <laughs> I'm glad you've done your research, Chris. Yeah, I mean, I'm basically a scientist. Um, <laughs> all, all outdoor baptisms let's just all go in the sea yeah um, yeah and so so it's been difficult to do over that time so i understand why it might be difficult at the moment but i think generally look at the trend of your baptisms over the years and i think if you're if you're only baptizing in the ones and twos and you know ones and twos percent wise that i think that's a real sign that you've got there's work to be done because i think you're slipping into decline okay and on on the other side of that if people aren't moving on from your church, no, I'm only joking. It's like, is there anything sort of like, so you might have low baptism numbers, but some people, they, they must be very just <clears throat> stable and lower attrition. Does that work with kind of like more aging congregations? Is there less, is there less movement if they are older as opposed to those who are maybe younger and work making the moves and all the rest of it? So does it sometimes again mask that actually some of your stalwarts, some of the people that you look at and you're like, oh, I've got all the usual faces, I feel fine, is because they're at stages of life where they don't move and that sometimes we miss where they're in the middle. Yeah. Um, and that the movement is, I, I'm going to assume, more work-related or schools-related and, you know, the things and the pressures on people that, you know, those stages in life. But, like, baptism, like, that sounds like, I mean, that figure is high. Don't mm. get me wrong. It, it's like, it's it's clearly accurate but i i don't think any of us look at it like that on a on a monthly or annual basis or maybe even track it to report it which you've you've touched on but like what what's i think we need to unpick this on its own right but what's something we do to get intentional about that because it's the only organic sign that a church is growing um and it's one of the only times that we talk about growth in its own right as opposed to just looking yeah. at the health of everything that goes on like what is something we can do to be intentional about that because this obviously has to link into everything yeah yeah i mean it's one of the the first steps in in discipleship isn't it baptisms and i think you know to be intentional about okay how, how do you how do you get that you know how do you get those numbers up and you obviously you don't want to just do it for numbers sake it's it's because it's showing a a real you know showing life change it's showing people growing in their faith it's all those kind of things um but how, how do you how do you increase those numbers then and i think that that's you norm, normally what you need to do is have someone who's responsible for organizing your baptism service so let's say you're going to do a baptism service every you know few months or you're going to do baptisms as part of it every week someone needs to be responsible for hey you've just become a christian or hang on a minute you've never been baptized why don't you get back you know and be intentional about asking people because actually i think people often will go for something when they're asked to it's often um so here's, here's a good here's a good thing i got baptized at the age of 17 
and I uh, kept putting it off. Why? I don't really know. I think it's probably because I'm a, I'm, I was a bit lazy as a teenager and just kept on putting it off and off and off and just going, oh, you know, I'll, I'll, it, when it's the right time, you know, that kind of thing. And, but really the right time was when I knew in my heart that I, I was, I wanted to follow Jesus for the, the rest of my life, which was actually way before I was 17. Um, so, and you know, so I, I, you know, I maybe a few years before that could have gone, yeah, I'm going to get baptized. I want to make that decision. But if I had someone there yeah. who, was, who was asking me, that's, that's when you kind of go, yeah, actually I can go for it and talking about it. And so talking about it in your church services and talking about it online and talking about it, you know, making videos about baptism and why it's important and what's, you know, what it's all involved and, you know, um, and also like demystifying the process of it because you know it's often getting in front of uh, up in front of a whole lot of people being dunked in some water and you know that's quite a daunting prospect in and itself but if you've got someone that can explain it why it's important why it's done i think it just takes away some of the um uh, the worry yeah. on, in people's minds and i think that can often be the case and you get a lot of you know you i'm sure within every church of people that's listening there's going to be people in their congregation that you are surprised they never got baptized. And, uh, and it's always just worth asking them about that because it's showing signs that they're making that commitment and that yeah. next step on. So yeah, I think if you want to get more baptisms, have someone that's responsible for asking people. Yeah. I'm, I'm for doing them more regularly. That that's it. Like, honestly, there's a point, like let's, let, let's open up a theological debate another day on this one. Um, my, my church, when we first launched, um, and this is first launch. So like we did a, did a summer of kind of like, you know, soft launch. And then we launched properly coming in September, a couple of years back. We did baptisms more regularly than communion in the corporate setting. Mm. We pushed communion out to all local small group settings, yeah. connect groups um, and all its varieties. So like whenever we met meetings, prayer meetings and all the ancillary stuff that's around the main congregated items of service that we did that all included communion but every congregational aspect of what we did had baptism um it's funny how that sets a precedent for what you're about to do um so actually what happened was is that we totally normalized baptisms as being a regular thing and set expectation um and for a month like we 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 probably we did way more than our 10 percent in a month yeah yeah, yeah. As as a result, I understand practicality. I understand if you don't own your own building, that stuff's a pain. Um, but I'm going to put the challenge out there. We didn't own our own building. We still did it every week. Um, so, like, think creatively. Put something in place. Do something. Um, make it make it the norm. I think sometimes we put other aspects of what we do take such a priority, but they're the easy ones. Actually, some of these do take a bit more effort, and we we put them to the side because it's a bit can be a bit of a faff. Look prioritize it i think that's that's my thing like make sure it's priority um, and that's what that's then what gets the focus isn't it 